Aloha everyone. Heading into Monday, I have a lot of issues overall with this market. I go over them in my new positions page commentary section. I please, I suggest you read that to know exactly where I am mentally on this market. But bullish sentiment, it's still way out of whack. Negative divergences, especially in the advanced decline line. And looking at high yield bonds like J and K, HYG, that's just ugly and terrible. And, you know, I don't know if it'll go in and really affect the market. But if we just look at the last time that we had kind of that weak area was in November. We had the downtrend. Sure enough, we found the lows in Raleigh. But just, you know, just keep an open mind out there. The NASDAQ looks great. NASDAQ 100 looks great. But overall, there's still a lot of issues, and I don't want to be too bullish here. I need to see further confirmation of the reversals on Thursday and Friday. But overall, the market to me looks just, you know, a little extended up here. We'll see, though. Uh, I'm still going to take long positions when they show up. I'll let my trailing profit stops take me out whenever it's time to get out. Right now, I've gone from being fully invested to about 75% invested. Probably 70% on the long side, 5% on the hedge side. 25% cash and I'm willing and ready to put that cash to work when the right signals show up and what's funny is that one of our highest asset allocation signals actually came on Friday. ABCO is a can slim quality stock. It is also a pre perfect speculator scan quality stock. It is putting a very bullish intraday candle hammer pattern right near the 50 day moving average on very strong volume with a nice surge and bop to its highest green level since all the way back here at the end of January. The downtrend came overall on a very nice, calm, basically price decline. Volume didn't dry up completely, but you can see there was still some dry up in the volume as it pulled back. Two big accumulation bars in that base, and finally this big surge right here near support. Now with it being canceled and perfect speculator, that's 4% total, 2% for each scan. It was also in a BOP scan and in a price volume BOP surge scan, so that's a 6% total of percent of my account capital that's going to go into this one position my limit order will be at 45.20 the high of the day and my first stop will be 43.85 the low here the low of the day and then my final sell stop for now will be the 50-day moving average and as this stock moves up the 50-day moving average will rise and whenever it gets break even with the low of the day here at 43.85 that will be my one and only stop at abco really really like the signal it isn't the greatest looking overall chart pattern because of the red and the heavy distribution. But really, it looks like an accumulation. When you go to a weekly chart, look at that base. You're nice and round, the candles, the wicks on the bottom, the heavy volume. So actually, even though there's a lot of red volume in here, you can see with all the intraday tails that it was basically support. The gap up, there was a downgrade. And despite the downgrade, the stock's still bouncing. So excellent new long position. We'll see how it works. If it fails... I don't risk much. I'm risking less than 1% on the position, or actually right around 1% if I use the 50-day moving average. Uh, you got to take that for a potential measured move. I'm looking possibly for a move from here to here of 41%. Uh, yeah, that's about right around 25 to 1 reward to risk ratio. You got to take it, and that's why it's got a higher percent of my account capital allocated to it. The other new long position, OCFC. Kind of like a double bottom support right here. Support level, support level here. Nice heavy volume reversal. Look at the huge volume surge and look at the BOP surge going to its highest green level all the way back to November. If you get up close, you can see that it also closed higher than where it opened. If it would have closed lower than where it opened, would not have been interested. But very nice pattern. I'm looking for a measured move similar from the move from October to this December high right here. That's 49%. And once again, what do I risk if I'm wrong? 1% here, 2% back to here, so about a 1.5% for then this possible 50% move. I'll take that any day, 25 to 1 reward risk ratio. And that's what I'm looking for in this kind of tape. So if OCF, OCFC fails, my first cut loss level is 28.44, and then my final cut loss level is 27.86. Like I said, we don't risk a whole lot to know if we're wrong on the trade. And if we're right, we get another measured move. I'll take it any day. And then I have one, and by the way, OCF, 
jumping ahead of myself here. OCFC, my limit order will be 28.88. And like I said, those two stops, 28.44 and 27.86 will be my two stop levels. And then I have one new speculative swing trade, MBVX. MBVX was an oversold RSI pattern back here. It worked off the oversold conditions and it's not quite a full on momentum signal yet because it's not above the 50 RSI line. But we're finding once again, double bottom support you can see the low here is 268. The low back here on the pocket pivot point gap up was 269. So we got a double bottom. Max green bop the whole way. Low volume on the pullback. And now a nice surge in volume on Friday above average. MBVX was only in my max green bop scan. It was confirmed in my tertiary scan. But this is by far the best either oversold or momentum RSI swing trade. I saw that earnings are supposed to be on the 13th. I can't confirm that anywhere else but NASDAQ.com, so it's a risky trade. But whenever I'm only putting a grand into the trade total, which is not even 1% of my account capital, yeah, I know what I'm getting involved with. If it gaps down, I don't think it'll be that severe. I really can't find anywhere here on the chart where it's gapped down heavily after earnings in the past few years. So once again, it's just not something I'm worried about here. But if you are, stay away. Me, I got a swing for the fences here. But my limit order will be at 287. My first profit target is here at 357. Next one is here at 450. And then hopefully you can get up to 605 if everything goes well. And remember, if it starts to ebb and flow higher, similar to how H&R did after its long signal here, see that rounding out base and how it rounds out and becomes a trend falling position, then I would take the target limits off of MBVX. But for now, that's going to be sell limit one, sell limit two, sell limit three. All right, those are the three new long positions heading into the new trading week. Daylight savings time, so I'll be waking up around 3 a.m. every morning over here on Maui. But like I said, the market still looks good. Doesn't look great, but we're still very extended. I would love to see this market pull back to the 50-day moving average in a nice fashion. However, if we break out to new highs, I'm not going to complain. 75% invested on the long, 70 invested on the long side overall. Have a lot of great long positions. A lot of solid patterns that could turn into great patterns. But unfortunately, not only has the advanced decline line deteriorated, but so have my long scans. It's going to take some work to get them to look good again. But it's not bad yet. A lot of wishy-washiness. But I think that's the best way to be right now. Go with your long positions. Obey your trailing profit stops. Take the new long signals. But just... Make sure you keep some tight stops. All right, everybody. Good luck in the upcoming trading week.